Hey, what's up, beautiful Bellcast listeners? Welcome to another episode. I am Giovanna Antoinette Kwan. And I am B. Oh, shit. Okay. Nice. Nice to have you on, B. We're Thank both you. like in a little blacky blacks. Check us out. Check us out on the, if you're listening to us on uh, whatever podcast streaming you are listening to us, check us out on the YouTube. We look kind of cute today. Yeah. If you're like weaving in and out of traffic, uh, listening to us on <laughs> iTunes, you know what? Uh, go ahead and, and take your eyes off the road, um, pull the phone out of your pocket and then uh, look and then YouTube us and then hopefully you don't crash. I hate you. Why? Anyway, <laughs> so I wanted to share something that... Uh, you know what would be funny? Actually, if we started a series called like Hater Corner, where you say something and I immediately tell my take on it. <laughs> and Wait, I'm, that I, just sounds like our relationship right now reversed. Hater. I play the hater. No, but you only bring up positive things. Like you bring up like... Um, oh, so you're the hater? So we switch. I'm only the hater. Okay, let's so, do it for this podcast. So you could, no, no, but I'm talking about, but we need to find topics though. Oh, like I where, see. Where you're, you're like, uh, I don't know, there's like, now there's free mountain spring water in every single elementary school. And then I, I do my take on it. And like every single topic, it's you tell me, or maybe it should be called like glass half empty. And that's all I ever say. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I like it. Don't take it, all right? It's ours. Don't <laughs> fucking steal it. <laughs> I know. No, I wanted to share with them what we were doing a couple nights ago. So when I get stressed sometimes or when things kind of feel like too serious for me, I like to just unplug and unwind. You know, I'll smoke a little bit and then I love listening to music. Like music is my ultimate outlet to any anything I'm going through. If I'm like super happy, music. If I'm super sad, music. If I feel uninspired, music. If I feel super inspired, music. Like music is everything for me. So I was... I don't know. I, th I think I was just feeling like the effects of like, damn, it's the holidays, but we're working so hard, uh, but we're not with our friends or our family because everyone's getting sick or we just got sick or we don't want to get people sick. And they just felt like a lot of things I couldn't control. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do you feel that a little bit? No? Um, no, not really. Like even your mom, she has to be out of the country because she's afraid to come back. Yeah, I like, so I like just, her over there. Okay, well, <laughs> there's just so many things I feel like are so different this year for obvious reasons. Super different, yeah. Yeah, and I think when I started thinking about that, I just started kind of getting a little like, not sad, but I just felt off. I just felt off and I didn't, I don't like being in that space for too long. So I'm like, oh, shake it the fuck off. Like you can't control it. Like, you know, I always reason, I always go, I do negative and positive in my own head. So I'm like, well, duh, this is why it's happening. And I explain it to myself and I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay, I feel better. But I just wanted to shake it off and just fucking shake it all off. So I, I was, I told you, I'm like, hey, do you have, you know how you have memories tied to music? Like what, there's, and we all have this. Like I'll hear a song and it takes me back to that moment when like, I don't know, I was running and I ran into a pole and then like, all of the vivid memories come back to me. So I'm like, let's play a game. And then you and I, we played a game. I, I was like, hey, Google, um, play me a 90s playlist. Cause we grew up, we're 90s babies. We were born in the 80s, but we grew up in the 90s. And like, there were so many cool fucking memories that were coming out of your, that I had never even heard. One of them, it was, I forgot what prompted this, but it was like a dance song. And you were like, oh, shit, this reminds me of a dance I put together. Do you yeah. Remember that story? Yeah. So it was. Uh, this shit is fucking funny just because you're so dumb. Yeah. And even like the <laughs> nine, So even the 90s playlist is kind of funny because if you guys grew up in the 90s and you watch like MPV on repeat all day long, the infomercial is always the now this is what I call music volume seven. Yeah. And it's so, and it's like they like, had all the bangers though. It's like Sheryl Crow and it's like Spotify before Vertical, Spotify. Vertical Horizon or something like like the weirdest <laughs> the the weirdest band that and the like, artists you not really hear of anymore. Matchbox Twenty. Yeah, Matchbox Twenty. You know, like featuring Chingy, and it's like <laughs> it's like the weirdest stuff. So um, yeah, we were listening to that, and they're just playing all. Chingy these would not fly anymore. Chingy why? Because it's Chingy. What's Chingy? Oh well, never mind. Anyway, are you more racist than his name? I, I guess so. Let's fucking just stop it. <laughs> so like, uh, yeah, so it was just like uh, we hear those songs, right? Like songs we haven't heard in a long time. And then it started to some of them sounded kind of like housey. And then I, I was like, oh, shoot, 
that reminds me of this song. And um, if you guys are old school house heads, this is like EDM before EDM, then you would know. But there's a DJ called Rim, uh, Richard Humpty Vision. And I think he's even considered like the grandfather of house. But there was a song called Shut the Fuck Up and Dance. So all my peeps that are like probably over 35 know what the hell I'm talking about. Oh, everyone. I, I didn't. I never heard this song. And then so you would have Because I was a rocker, alternative rock, punk rock, classic rock person. Yeah. And like and back in this day, since there was no Internet, you only knew these songs if you went to like the underground raves. Like it's like a like music was very separated back then. This day and age, like any underground artist can be mainstream through TikTok or through or just being spread music like this you had to be a degenerate so if you were like 14 15 16 popping ecstasy pills uh smoking weed when it was illegal and you're going to these underground warehouse raves or these raves in the middle of the desert nowhere than you'll know like songs like this and so when i heard it i was like hey babe do you know this song and like no i didn't and i'm like oh you know what that actually made me think of this story and so um I was super big into music, and I remember my well, scene- specifically rave music, right? Yeah, music mu- like well, uh, everything because I was also a drummer. Oh, okay, okay. So I just like music of all sorts. I liked like jazz. I liked um, like like Curtis Mayfield. I liked um, like Gershwin. I like all kinds of just shit, you know. And so um, my school at the time, um, my senior year, you guys probably heard the story before, but I wanted to change my life and kind of like get more involved in school. Yeah. So I had like a raver phase. I had like a drug dealer phase. I had a gangster phase. This then, is in senior year. You had all these phases. No, no, no. I had those in high school. Oh, okay. Senior year. I'm like, I want to be more involved in school and kind of get my shit together. So I joined ASB and ASB. We're going to throw like this welcome back dance that year where it was like the first dance of the year. And it was going to be like, just have everyone have fun and stuff, you know? And the way that the Mark Keppel high school basketball court is, it's here are bleachers on one side and this is usually like the referee's box where they also like like write down how many free throws you make or whatever and then the basketball court goes this way and we always have the dj down here um playing this way but because i was a 15 year old degenerate or 16 year old degenerate i've been to all kinds of raves i, I seen, thought you said this was in your senior year oh yeah yeah right. but then like well i haven't i wasn't weren't you 19 when you were a senior no I still wasn't. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Was it the first time you were a senior or the second time you were a senior? Second time I was a senior. Okay. But I, I joined school early, so I was just everyone else's age. So um, when, when uh, but my rave days were like 15, 16. So I was pulling back from my old experience. Oh, gotcha. my childhood, okay. my, my, my childhood experiences when I was, I was 18 tapping into 15, 16 year old, right? Okay. And by this time I've already seen like Tiesto, Paul Oakenfold, like Christopher Sick. Lawrence, like people on a giant stage as like a 15 year old, like destroying it, right? 40,000, 50,000 person wow. masses. I've seen those. So what I pitched was, why don't we have the DJ on the bleachers? So they're playing down to us, not on the same level. And we get a trust system. Trust systems are those uh, like aluminum looking things with all the little triangles built into where they hang all the lights on. Yeah, like any big film movie studio will have shit like this. Yeah, I'm like, and we get a trust system. And we have lights, the craziest lights, and we rent base cabinets because the the dances are never bassy. Like it needs to be where like, and of you course, you feel I, it in your bones. Yeah, in your fucking bones. And uh, as I was pitching it like this, you could just hear all these normal kids who's never been a degenerate and go to all these underground parties. They're like, Bart's kind of crazy. I'm like, dude, trust me. This is how shit's done in the real world. You guys have these fucking pussy ass fucking dances where you're you playing are ahead of your time. Where you're playing fucking. The wackest like music on the radio. Finally, it I'm like, what kind of losers to listen to the music on the radio? Because at True. that time, I didn't. If you listen to the radio, You're unless lame. it was gangster rap, it was. But even the good gangster no. rap was off. Exactly. Uh, you know. So I don't know how, but they actually listened to me because my friend's uh, older brother was also a DJ and he was in a house DJ crew. Shout out to Solid Disco. It's easy how they listen to you. A lot of those kids. Think back at that age. A lot of us were intimidated as fuck. And if there's someone that's spearheading it and really passionate, yeah. of course we're going to follow. But it's also different because I felt like the outcast. You know when you have a bunch of like ASB people? Yeah, but they were all, they were so, all. So imagine like Mean Girls, scared right? Scared of you. Imagine Mean Girls, like eight Mean Girls. And then you're Lindsay Lohan trying to pitch an idea to people that have been friends for like 15 years. 
So I really don't know how they listen to me. But I was like, we should do this. They're like, how much is it going to cost? I went to go talk to uh, Mark, which is my friend's older brother. And then I, we worked out a deal. I forgot how much it was. It fit the budget. They were down. So shout out to the entire ASB crew at the time for even <laughs> listening to this crazy idea. If you're of listening, a, shout out to you guys. <laughs> to, a recover, to a recovering drug addict. And then we did it. So uh, we brought that in. And then, uh, and like what I want them, what I wanted them to experience was the experience that I get from raves and like masses and stuff where there's breakdowns, there's like little like, like, you know, like Sarah McLaughlin type stuff where it's just like chill and you could do your interpretive dance. It goes. Does this still sound really good? Like that's the kind of shit that I wanted. That was really good. Yeah, that's the kind of shit I wanted people to experience, you know? Does it still sound as good when you're not high? Oh yeah, I mean, oh, okay, I, don't, I, mean okay. I don't know because I'm. You were always high. Because when I'm when I'm on ecstasy, I I did so much ecstasy. I think I have residual ecstasy. So when even I even to this day, even till this day, when I hear oh, music shit. like that, I'm like, oh fuck, oh shit. Like I understand, I can draw back. It's nostalgic, oh. you know. Because that's how I feel music, and I've never listened to music on ecstasy like that. Oh shit! So yeah, I feel what, like that's why I connected with you so hard because I'm like, oh, he's the first person that feels music the way I do. Well, if you go to a massive, you're like, these 40,000 people, the people that feel I've been to multiple, you oh, schmuck. I know. But so, they're usually so high, I'm like, oh man, that is nuts. Yeah. I've just been drunk. Well, yeah. not even drunk, just buzzed. Yeah. So I, I'm, so like, yeah. And then so my, my friend's older brother, Mark, DJ Mark, who's a real. DJ Mark. Yeah. Who's a real actual like DJ, not just like put songs together. Um, he built like a set list, like a real set list, not just songs, but how they're going to transition, how wow. it's going to build up, like, like that kind of shit. And then uh, I remember him like doing his thing already, building his intro, like, fuck it, that's fucking Mark right there. And I'm standing next to a bass cabinet and it's like me and my other degenerate friends who are ravers and gangsters and stuff are like, fuck yeah. And you see the lights going fucking crazy and then lasers going like that. Where was this happening? In the gym? In the gym. And they're on the bleachers. So I'm like, fuck, he's a fucking god, dude. Right? And then you just see all the other kids like being completely overstimulated because they're just used to like, you know those rainbow lights? It's just like red and yellow and green. They're used to like our normal dances are just like this. A and tiger dance? Yeah. And it's usually like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like just like radio songs. Yeah. And you're just used to like, I got hoes. I got hoes in the front area. They're not, that's what they're, that, they're trying to like boogie down to that. And then all of a sudden you have like, yeah. And then you just see all the kids go like, what? the fuck is this kind of dance? And I'm like, yeah, you don't even know. It's just going to be fucking crazy. It's about to get, oh, the beat's going to drop. It's going to be so fucking crazy. And then it was. Um, How many of your friends were there too that were amped? There's maybe like. You guys are so dumb. Maybe less than five, to be honest. Maybe less. <laughs> Some five cause, idiots. Because you know the major population, people that would. So real gangsters don't go to school dances. They might if their girlfriend drags them, drag them to go, but most gangsters, most real gangsters aren't going to go to school dances. They're too cool for that. And in that time period, there's a hell of gangsters. And then so most people that went to school dances were either like jocks or like people that did regular in school or just regular people. And then even ravers wouldn't really go to school dances, but we went because we we're throwing it with me and my friends. And then so... Like when the beat drops, I look around. I'm like, oh, fuck. I don't think they're having this. It's not having the effect that I thought it was going to have. Well, okay. What effect did, did you think they were going to have? And what was the reality? So I thought, what I thought. What is it, the expectations? Act the expectation, I, I thought I was going to be like. And people are going to go, oh, shit. And fucking pull their hair out and go, this is the best dance ever. Okay, that's your expectations? What's but the reality? Everyone's just like. Like almost like <laughs> kind of like worried and like really yeah like I, I felt like what people felt like is um you know when you like when you're driving and then usually the sign spinner guy he's just kind of holding it like this right and you're like oh okay cool he's doing his job and then there's a guy that's fucking like really going ham he's just fucking going crazy <laughs> like his fucking life depended on it right and you're driving you're like. Okay, 
because now he's spinning so fucking hard he can't even see the phone number <laughs> so it defeats the whole purpose right yeah yeah that's i don't know what he's working that's how i feel like the kids felt like where the kids are just like okay because you have like dudes going ham in the corner the fucking song is going ham the dj's fucking going ham and the crowd is just like they just kind of want to just like boogie with their friends and then they they, they even like couldn't you know and then um then the actual song that when I was telling you about the Richard Humpty vision, he started to play because the intro is very figure, uh, very, very unique. It goes. Choo, 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 choo. So the minute that I hear that bleed into the current song, I'm like, oh, fuck, he's going to play shut the fuck up. And dad's going to be fucking crazy. Uh, you said because that was like the jam of that year. It was year. the anthem. You know, when people think of trance and they think of like Robert Miles, like ding, 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 ding. Like that's that version of house. It was like an Such an old reference. Yeah, it was like that version of House. So when you hear that, I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck, he's gonna be fucking crazy. Oh, fuck, oh, fuck, fuck. And then so when it, when, and then the beat drops and he goes, if you have a dash, then what the fuck are you, did you, have you come for? And then for me, even like cussing in high school, like to play like a non, yeah. a non, because they will always have to play the radio edits. They can't play like. The explicit version. Yeah, they, when they played that. And then my, of course, like the homie Mark doesn't give a fuck. He's like, if I'm going to play some house, I'm going to play some fucking real house. So he like, then what the fuck? And the music cuts up. Then what the fuck did you come for? And then uh, I look at all the teachers. I'm like, oh shit. And then the, you see the teachers go, like they want to shut it down. It goes, dun, 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 and it starts playing. And I'm like, yeah. And me and my friends are going crazy. And everyone's just like. I've never heard this song before. Damn. It was like, like, that's what they look like on their face. Nobody was even enjoying it. Not nah. one person. <gasps> did you guys have like a recap nah. meeting after that? Uh, I think we did. And it was just like, hey, uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to throw dances like that anymore. Really? Oh, that is fucking. So when you told me that, I was dying of laughter because I'm just like, you were so hype. And yeah. then it just fucking blew up in your face. I was too thirsty. <laughs> that I was too was fucking. So fuck Honestly, too thirsty. jokes aside, though, that shit's next level. Like, y'all were some really smart kids to do that. I mean, we just saw, like, is that that's the part that's crazy where, like, you know, when you're part of an underground culture, you know what the truth is. But if mainstream hasn't caught up to it yet, yeah, you're, you're, you're an weird. outcast. Yeah. You know, like, you're really weird. So like, cause like even, even during that time, like, you know, now dance is mainstream, but back in the day, all the real dance battles happened at like raves and underground warehouses and stuff like that. So like, um, now you have schools with choreo, like, uh, choreography teams and shit like that. But back in those days, like all the, all the, I feel like I kind of semi recognize all the dudes in the first season of America's best dance crew where like, I've like kind of seen him before. Yeah. Like even Anthony, when I first saw him, I was like. I think I've seen you at a rave, probably under a different name or like, you know, or a different crew. And then these are crews that they probably don't want to mention because they're like the old school crews, which also have to deal with like drugs and all that stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. It's just a different world, you know? And I'm just like, hmm, you know? And, the, but, and then when I bring up names of like DJs in these raves, all the, all the people from that generation, like, yup. So I'm like, oh, you guys know. They know what's up. Yeah. Okay. On that note, I'm going to stop you real quick because I have to do, introduce our sponsor. Shout out to our sponsor, Scaleshare. I know a lot of us have been like, damn, I had all these really cool goals for 2020 and 2020 stopped me from doing them. So now in 2021, I am more amped than ever to achieve them. And just like you guys, I feel exactly the same, which is why I love Skillshare because a lot of us know what we want to do and why we want to do it. But then the how part is what we need help with, right? Either knowledge or skills or the know how to do things. And so no matter what 2021 brings, you can spend it creating something meaningful with Skillshare's online classes. And in case you don't know what Skillshare is, it is a online learning community that offers membership with meaning with so much to explore, real projects to create and the support of fellow creators. Creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. And these are just some of the classes that Skillshare offers. And one of them is which is what I was going to take. So they have uh, DIY product photography, style and shoot creative skills taught by Rachel Golota and Daniel Inskeep. And they keep uh, their faculty, like all the teachers, they are legit uh, staff and authorities in the actual field. So for example, the iPhone photography class, how to shoot and edit conceptual photos on your phone 
super useful. You don't need to have the most expensive equipment ever. It's taught by Adobe Creative Resident, Amelie Satsker. So they have all kinds of really cool classes from illustration, graphic design, lifestyle, web development, freelance and entrepreneurship and marketing. So whatever goal that you want, you can become a one-stop shop and get there. So for sure, check that out. And please go explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash Bell, B-E-A-W, and get a free trial of premium membership. Go to Skillshare.com slash B-E-A-W, a annual subscription. It's less than $10 a month. You owe it to your guys, dude. You owe it to yourselves to bring the best version of your 2021 to accomplish all the goals that you want. That's Skillshare.com slash Bell, B-E-A-W. And we're back. Uh but yeah, hater hater comments aside, I think you guys were like next level, man. I think that's really cool. It really felt next level. And I was just trying to bring like the joy that I experienced um, in that environment. Because it's like, it's almost like, you know, when you, when you see how things are supposed to be done, you can't unsee it anymore. Right. So I'm like, oh, this is how a concert or a dance is supposed to be. Yeah. So you go back to a school dance. You're like, this is fucking whack. This isn't how it's done. Yeah. And I'm like, I want everyone to experience the same thing. But if they're not ready for it. Yeah, you're the weird one. Yeah. And then the funny thing is, is later on, I was already getting out of my like rave phase. And then once I got into college, I was still big fans of the DJs. So like, we, you know, we would we used to go to like, like hard fest and stuff like that. We're, we're, we're not fucked up, but we're just there just to enjoy the music. And now I would see the same people in high school. That, that were judging you. That were, were awkward. And now they're a fucking rolling their ass off. And I'm like, motherfucker. Where's yeah. my thank you, God damn it. Yeah. Yeah, it happens like that. You're just ahead of the curve. I'm like, when you were 16, you thought I was weird. And then now you're 21 and you are living my 16 year old life you fucking weirdo yeah you're the weird one do you like that you lived so much so quickly um i i do i wish i lived more oh you know i always say like i wish i went to jail yeah so you want more negative experiences yeah why younger yeah why i don't want to go to jail now right there's more at stake but like i'm such a raccoon dicker i love that <laughs> we don't share that we don't share that enough yeah let's not share it all right, all right. We, you already ruined cuny yeah, for us fine. so i'm such a raccoon dicker. god damn it you shared it again <laughs> you piece of shit that um raccoon dicker is just code for like pretty much like yoloer but it comes from somewhere it's an inside joke but pretty much like like you just gotta do the most extreme at the time and you really get f it's a, it's like a a crazier more extreme version of uh when in rome kind of like that it's, it's, it's when in Rome and YOLO put together pretty much. And yeah, so I wish like I went to jail as a kid so that there's not as much consequences later on, but I've also experienced that and I can draw from that. But I think what really scared me about jail and which, which is why I try to stay out like a lot of literally, people. Yeah, literally everyone else. It's not the jail part of it. It's the record part of it. Oh. Because you know, you always hear like, as but a doesn't kid, it get what's that what's that term called? Like exonerated or whatever. Expunged. Expunged, Exp maybe. I don't know. But just as a kid, like you don't know all the, the laws and politics. So you're just like, um, or rules. So you just like um you're like, oh shit, okay. Misdemeanors aren't that important. Felonies are really important. Like you kind of just have this kind of thought. So you're like, oh, if I go to jail, if I just get like a slap on the wrist, that's okay. But if I go to jail, like every it's hard to get a job because you're gonna know that you went to jail. So I was always scared. Like really, really scared. But then now that I look back, I'm like, ah, oh, it's not that crazy. Yeah. Some of my business partners went to jail. Some <laughs> yeah. of the most successful people I know went to jail, actually. I'm yeah. like, uh, I don't know if it was that crazy. Oh, my God. Not to send the wrong message out there for sure. <laughs> because a lot of like the friends that did go to jail, they had setbacks. You know, luckily, they're really positive and mentally strong people where they don't see it that way. But they were set back. Yeah. You know? But I think it all just depends on where it is you want to be at what time in your life. If you even care about that or if you're just kind of more go with the flow the way I am, I don't think you'll give a fuck. Yeah. I, I'm i like, half of me is sad that I didn't, not sad, but half of me was like, dang, it would have been tight to experience all that shit when I'm younger. But I'm glad I didn't because I'm so, at that time, I was so easily impressionable and like I could have just been manipulated like crazy. I would have just, I probably would have gone down the wrong path really fast. Yeah. Cause I was just so naive and dumb.
like, like everyone, right? Well, when I do shit, I just like doing it. You know, I really like raccoon dicking. So like, you know, me and Nadim, we signed up for a jujitsu competition with zero jujitsu practice. We showed up, we weighed in, we did all that stuff. And even with powerlifting, like I was just training at 24 hour fitness and I'm like, am I doing this shit right? I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm just lifting because I want to lift. And I'm like, oh shit, there's actually a way to compete in lifting. And this is the three ways you lift, you know? So I think like just my personality type, I like to do what I like to do things in the way that is like, um, like, you know, you're in the in crowd. Mm. You know what I mean? Kind of. I mean, I know you like doing shit like the best of the best. Like you like going to the source of things. And not not so much like the best of the best, but like I, I want to do things when it's like, like there's enough, like, okay, you did it at a street cred level. I see. Damn, you gangster. You know what I mean? Everything's about cred to you, huh? Street cred. Kind of. I think so. Yeah. You know? Because I even think that's why you started doing stand-up comedy too because you were like, I don't want to just be a YouTube fucking comedian. Yeah. I want the street cred and like I want to earn some sort of stripes. Yeah, because back then, so the way YouTube was viewed back then was like in- It was jokes. Yeah, 2007 to 2010 is not the way it's viewed now. Fuck no. Now you do, like you look at YouTube and you're like, oh shit, superstar, fuck. Oh my God, like these people hang out with the actual celebrities. Like look, oh shit, Jake Paul, Logan Paul's actually hanging out with Justin Bieber. It's like, it's almost the same when you get to the top. But back then when YouTube was an emerging thing, it was even more looked down upon than like TikTokers almost. And it's, or Viners, I I should say, where they're like, wait, these guys call themselves comedians and they have to edit. Like true comedians, you're, you're a wordsmith. Like you're a master of your craft. You can say and tell stories and spin things around and have punchlines. And you have your audience like in the palm of your hand and that's your craft. And uh, you're almost like a philosopher and a magician at the same time. And you have to edit what you're saying. You don't even know what you're saying. You just spew it out and then you cut it up later on. And then so for me, I'm like, what the fuck? You don't think I'm a real comedian? And that's why I have to go, well, fuck then. I need some fucking street credit in this motherfucker. So I started doing stand-up comedy, you know? And I was like, okay, cool. I, I dance in your world. I'm gonna go back in mine. Let's see you last in our world. And no one, no one actually could at the time. Damn McGregor. <laughs> you McKinney. I fucking love that guy. McGregor's fucking awesome. <laughs> He's like, I want to take this opportunity to apologize to no one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking love him. He's fucking awesome. Yeah, that's that's something that I'm like, damn, I wish I would have got into more trouble or I wish I would have like. What well, doesn't have to be trouble, right? Like my, I think I just had more experiences that are eventually going to get me into trouble. What, to trouble specifically? You want trouble? No, but I know that it was going to go against what my parents wanted for me. So I know I'm going to end up getting in trouble. Oh, so I guess what, what I'm, I'm saying. T- I'm not, not like the real trouble. I'm not trying to like see. fucking rob people. Yeah. I just wanted to do things that I know were against the rules that are going to land me in trouble with my parents. I see. I guess what I'm asking is now. What about now? What about now what? Like, so for me, um, I wasn't trying to get into trouble. I was just always trying to do things at a street cred level, right? So if I was into like EDM, you don't listen to that at your house. You need to go to those underground, freaking off location, weird places to hear like music like that. And then so that's what got me into trouble. I wasn't trying to get into trouble or like, um, like gangs, like. I wanted to join one that actually like had legitimate business and were fighting and stuff. Like I wasn't, fighting? I wasn't what do you trying, mean I wasn't trying to like you, like you bang on other people and you fight and stuff like in the parking lot. And that's mall. what you wanted? Yeah. Oh, like I didn't want to just be a crew of people. Oh, cool. We have a name and then that's it. You know, you wanted to be doing some actual illegal. It didn't shit. have to be illegal, but I want to do some actual shit. So, uh, so I wanted to join things with street cred. And then I think as I matured, my street cred, spirit stayed the same but it just started like evolving into okay if i can do the military better be the marine corps oh if i do comedy i better do a little bit stand of comedy you know if i'm gonna lift oh i better compete in powerlifting so it was just it just constantly pushes me in that direction so it's not so much i was looking for trouble it's the raccoon dicker in me uh searches for like this type of activity Mm -hmm. so when you're saying like you wish you got into trouble more i'm like well you don't have to get in trouble now you could just exercise your raccoon dick more yeah and which and which i do yeah, because now, I mean, I don't want to, I who's going to, like the trouble I get into now would probably be illegal. Yeah. 
if I want to get into trouble, yeah. like who's really, or, or I'm just irresponsible and now like my staff suffers or my son su suffers. So now it's different because I don't have anyone to answer to but myself, you know? So like now, like, like we're going to go, like we just got invited on a whim to hang out with you know, friends we've never really hung out with that live out of state that they're like, hey, we're going to do this shit and just fucking get weird. You want to come through? And I'm like, yeah, let's fucking get weird. You know, so now it's different. But I'm just saying at a younger age, I just wish I would have done more. Mm. I mean, I just couldn't. But like when I hear your stories, I don't have any of those stories because for me, it was like you go to school, you attend all your periods, school's over, you go straight home and I would just lock myself in the room. So I didn't really have interactions or, or a lot of stories to really share. I see. Yeah. Yeah, my stories to me, <laughs> the crazy thing is uh, my stories aren't even that crazy. I just realize that they're crazy to the normal people. But with the people that I hung out with, their stories are crazier. You know, but those are the stories that you just don't really hear because they're just so fucking crazy. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, like I don't have, like I'd never went to a school dance. Like junior high, I never went. Like I would walk by when I needed to walk to my mom's car, you know, to go home because yeah. she would pick me up late from school. So I'd walk by and I would peek in there and I'm like, oh, that looks really fun. Yeah, it looks like people are having fun there. Yeah, and I'm like, all right, well, whatever. And then finally I was going to get to attend a school dance, which was prom. And then I get in trouble and I I was not allowed to go to prom. How did you get in trouble? Uh, I snuck one of my boyfriends into my house. So naughty. Yeah. We well, didn't what did even, you do? How did you sneak him in? Okay, so... Through the bedroom window? Wait, no, this no, is no. the house Two of the story. Dad, right? Yeah, no. This was a climber? No. Damn, oh. let me finish. Okay. Okay, so... How did he climb? It was a school day. I'm just kidding. And my mom worked at a school, so she had the same hours I did. Yeah. So she would leave at 8 in the morning or before 8, like 7.30. And then my dad, construction worker, so he would leave at like five, six in the morning. Super early, yeah. Yeah, and then he wouldn't come uh, come home until like... Sunset. Yeah, exactly. And um, so, and at this point, my brother and my sister, my older brother and sister, they already moved out. They were married, so they didn't live there. It was just me and my little sister. My little sister went to school. I stayed back because I was sick. Uh, and were my you boy really sick? No. And then my oh. boyfriend at the time was sick, and he stayed back too. Was he really sick? Yeah. Okay. So then he <laughs> stayed back. I wasn't sick. I stayed back. I'm like, hey, well, just... Like, I don't even know why I said this. Maybe because he had a car and I didn't. Why don't you just come over and give me some COVID? No, there, COVID didn't exist at this time. It was COVID-13 probably. Fine. So then he's, at, oh, I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm at home. You want to just come through? My mom never let me have boys over, ever. My parents, I could never have boys over. How do you know that? Because I you, tried. Oh, you're like, can yeah. my boyfriend come over? Yeah, fuck no. Oh, she, she I wasn't even asked. allowed to really have a boyfriend either. I see. But they knew something was up. So. I see. So everyone's gone. Nobody's there. And I'm like, hey, well, if you're home, he had a car at the time. I'm like, just come over. Like, we'll just hang out and watch, you know, movies or whatever. And this was like around the month of prom. So I'm already a senior, I think. Yeah, I'm a senior. And he comes over and we're not doing anything. We're in the living room. We're just watching movies. He wasn't even there for like 30 minutes. So like, um, I hear my dad's keychain like the his keys and you know how everyone's keys have like a very different sound yeah, like yeah, a unique yeah. sound to yeah, them yeah. so i heard his and i'm like oh shit and instead of just staying in the he living wasn't supposed room to be home for a while. he wasn't supposed to be home because he never comes home and he knew i was staying because i'm sick and he's not the type to check up on me yeah so he oh, knew i was home shit. so he comes home and I, I like i hear it right yeah um i hear his keys so i'm like oh fuck you're not supposed to be here. My dad's not the type to check it, check in on me anyway. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to lock myself in my room. He's going to get what he needs and he's just going to walk right out. So I go, boyfriend, fucking go in my fucking room, hide underneath my bed. Why the bed? Why not the closet or something? Because the closet, are there like those sliding mirror thingies? Yeah. And you can fit in there? I don't know. I just figured he wouldn't. Look underneath like, the bed. That he wouldn't look underneath the bed. Okay. Uh, Yeah. So then... um. I locked the door. Did he run? Did he go dun, 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 into your room? No, he just walked in. Okay. So then uh, my boyfriend is at the time is underneath the bed. He doesn't have his shoes on. So he takes his shoes with him because, I mean, we didn't wear shoes inside the house. So then my dad, he starts trying to fucking break the door down. Your door? Yeah. And I'm not even thinking much of it at the time. What were you doing? Laying in bed? Yeah. So I'm like, oh, hold on. So I'm trying to play it off that I'm sick. Yeah. So then I open the door and I'm like holding my stomach. I don't know why. And I'm like, 
what's wrong? <laughs> and my dad just walks in. He opens the closet. He looks. So he already fucking knew. He already knew. Yeah. He opens the what closet the door fuck? and he's like looking. And I don't think he knows anything at this point. And I'm like, this is weird. And he's like, oh, I need to check the drywall. Because at that time. But obviously he does. Right. I At this time, I don't know that. But looking back, yes, he does. Okay. So, yeah, you didn't know at that time. I didn't time, know, but he but knew. But now you know he does. Yes. Okay. So at that time, my closet wall shared the wall with our shower. Okay. And there was like leaking at the time. So there was like a hole for a minute that he yeah. had just patched up because he fixed it. Yeah. So he goes and I thought that's what he was looking for. Yeah. I'm not thinking he knows what's up. Yeah. I'm just like, wow, these are some interesting things that are happening. Yeah. So he looks and he's like, I'm like, is everything okay? And he's like, oh, I just wanted to check this drywall real quick. And then he walks around my room and he checks on the floor, but then he makes it seem like he's looking outside my window because it's like, that's where the side of the bed was. Yeah. So then he looks, you know, on the floor, but then he plays it off like he's looking outside the window. And the way my room set up is the door would be to my left. I'm pretend I'm laying on my bed, doors to my left and right on the outside of my door is our sink. Our bathroom sink mm. so he leaves the door wide open and he's just leaning against the sink and we had cell phones at this time he calls my mom and he goes hey um do you think you can come over real quick and my mom's like i can kind of hear going what happened he goes no i just need you to come home so this is probably like 9 10 in the morning how are you not shitting bricks oh fuck yeah i'm shitting bricks are you kidding me you why didn't you go like Oh, my stomach hurts real bad and jump right back in bed. I was like, and I'm just sitting on my bed going like, what the fuck is happening? Okay, so I'm sitting there. Mind you, my sister doesn't live there, okay? So now my sister comes over. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Oh, shit. And I can kind of hear my boyfriend at the bottom of the bed kind of move a little bit and like kind of hit his elbow or whatever. And I'm like, fuck. So I'm just sitting there and I'm just playing it off and my... My sister's just kind of like, doesn't even give me a fucking heads up, no signal, nothing. So she's just sitting, like, she's just there talking to my dad and stuff. And they're right there. So I can't even communicate to my boyfriend or anything. And then my mom comes over. So I'm talking about like 30, 40 minutes, just kind of waiting there. Like, what the fuck is happening? Oh, my God. My mom comes home and she calls my boyfriend by his name. And she's like, hey, boyfriend, I know you're underneath the bed. Go home. And I'm like, Ugh. so then he gets out. They, My dad didn't do anything to him or whatever. I think my sister like moved him away. And then, yeah, like they just talked to me. I don't even know what it was. So all three of them knew? Yeah, nobody told me shit. I, so what ended what up happening? What the fuck? Yeah, one of our neighbors ratted, out, ratted me out. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, fucking bitch, fuck you. Yeah, I should have just had sex. I was, I didn't even have sex. One of your neighbors? Yes. Fucking ratty ass. I think she had a crush on my dad. Oh. Uh. Yeah, fucking bitch. Yeah, so because of that, the only dance I was like, finally, I'm going to experience a regular childhood, adolescent fucking moment. No. So this was your senior year? Yeah, I had my prom dress, everything ready to go, paid for. Nope, couldn't go. And the fucking, Fuck. even the saddest sad. thing. So sad. My girlfriends, because I was like pretty decent at doing makeup back in the day. They all came over to get ready and I helped them get ready and I yeah. couldn't even go. Um, damn, your fucking bitch ass neighbor. I know. What She's dead now. So fuck. RIP. She deserved it. No. Fucking ratting you out. Yeah, I mean, it's, it makes for a fun story now. I think my dad at that point thought I was like a fucking hoe. But I'm like, dad, I didn't even I didn't even have sex until I was in college, bro. But I don't think that was a. Uh, I don't think that calls for three people to come over. Uh, I mean, when you're imagining the worst. What's the worst? You're getting fucking doggy style? Yeah. Your little baby girl is getting doggy style. What's the difference between one person stopping versus three people stopping doggy style? Does doggy style require more than two hands? I don't know. Maybe he hands? didn't know what to do. I don't know. Maybe this was the first for him. And he's like, fuck, I need backup. I don't know. We never talked about it. We're not a family that talks about <laughs> shit. <laughs> or we weren't a family. We are now. But we back in the day, we didn't talk about shit like that. Man, yeah, maybe talking would have solved some problems. Obviously. Isn't that everything? It is. You know, every movie. Literally every everything. movie or TV show. You're just like, you know, if you guys talked it out, you really wouldn't have no problems. That's literally all of our problems. Yeah. If we sat there and really tried to like listen with intent of understanding yeah. with the intent to understand instead of trying to be correct. Yeah. Yeah, we would solve a bunch of shit, but nobody- We would have no TV shows or movies or anything I know, like that. but we like conflict, you know? We like the drama. Yeah. 
But I'm jealous of your upbringing versus mine for sure. That was exciting though. I what felt it. The doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, it was nuts. I was in my bed. I'm like, fuck, I'm about to get fucked up. Because I only I felt, I the, I only felt the doo -doo 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 like that from parents <sighs> once. Uh, and it was pretty overwhelming. It was, uh, did I ever tell you about, I think I did probably, probably millions of times. What? Oh, um, when I was at my girlfriend's house. And you climbed out the window? Yeah. Yeah, you told me. You that, told all of us. That was really scary. But you guys were doing the naughty naughty. We were just making out. Oh. Damn, you had to climb out a window with a boner? Yeah, it was hard. That is, what's what, hard? The, the climbing out of the window or the dick? Both of them. Because 15-year-old boners, they don't yeah, go away. Yeah, they, they don't go they, away, they don't man. Listen. Dude, 15-year-old boners and fucking wet vagges, they're nuts, man. Like, like you could feel that shit through thick-ass denim. Both. Yeah. yeah. That stuff is ready to rock and roll. It's the most potent stuff ever. Ugh. Fucking. <laughs> and the, the fucking. We're the dirtiest at that point, I too. Know. We're barely understanding hygiene. Like, we, like two years prior to that, we were not brushing our teeth and shit and wiping the wrong way. How do you think you would act if uh, Taika was. Um, oh, had way a girl, different. Had a girl over. Well, I don't think I would want it to be get to the point where he feels like he has to go around and sneak, sneak around. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Like. I hope I'm open-minded enough and understanding mm -hmm. enough to have an open relationship with him like that. Yeah. You know, who knows? He might not trust me with shit and I'll be extra annoying to him. So we'll see when we get there. But I really hope I'm like, he can see me as a guide. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll be sad because obviously I don't want my baby to do adult shit. I'll be like, <laughs> don't have sex. You know, it definitely changes the relationship, though, because that's uh, when I moved in with my dad when I was 15 uh, or 15, 15 and a half. That's what I really, um, really enjoyed. It was my dad can see how much control my mom was having over me and how much it made me rebel. So like mom, that's so smart. So my dad, my mom's super conditional, right? Like if you don't have this type of grades and if you're not this type of child, you don't even deserve a car or a cell phone. Um, and if you don't do this, you don't deserve allowance. If you don't do that, you don't do, do this. Like there's a million things that, um, that you have to earn every single way of it. Yeah. Right. My dad was like, there are some basic necessities, uh, basic necessities. And so to him, one of them was, I need to have a car if I'm going to be like 16. So it's not gonna be the best car, but um, he helped Just me. whatever gets you from point A to point B. Yeah. So he helped me buy uh, my aunt's car at the time. And it was like a thousand dollar Toyota Cressida. At least it got wheels. Move around in that. Uh, he gave me a little bit of allowance. And he goes, if you want more, go get a job. But here's some money. So if your friends are going to go out and eat, you guys can eat, watch movies. Just like you're not going to be able to ball the fuck out and buy every single like chew and clothes you want. But you can, you know, have like a bowl of pho every other day. Those things. And then he goes, and here's some TV for some entertainment. And he goes, if you, and he, he, goes, he was like, I only have two rules. One, let me know when you're going to leave and let me know when you're going to come back. And if you're not going to come back that night, give me a call. That's it. And then because of that, um, I felt way less restricted and I hid way less from my dad than I did with my mom. I like how you still hid it though. <laughs> I did. I still held, I held. You're trash. I still held under like underground rave parties in my, in my dad's garage. And I'm like, my dad works night shift. So you guys got to be the fuck out of here by the time it's like one. Because he gets home at two. What? At one? That's so early. I know. But it's better than nothing. You True. know, when you're a bunch of like degenerate 15, 16 year olds. Damn. You know, one of the things that I did, you know, my dad, you know, in his living room, he has like the two big speakers in the, the system. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I did was um, I dragged his couch into the garage, two couches from like a little L shape. Then I pulled those speakers into the garage. And then I took, I had these two 12 inch subwoofers in my Honda Civic. I took those out and then connected those. So I connected everything, closed the garage where that shit bumped like crazy. And you know, if you live in the hood, like El Monte, no one gives no a fuck. One gives a fuck. Yeah. So we're have the loudest fucking uh, like party ever and we're all fucking rolling our brains out and it was cool you're trash yeah and i'm jealous i wish i could have known you but i like i like that with my dad because you just feel more open i was able to bring my girlfriend home we would go out to eat you know it was it was just felt like more accepted versus like constantly being judged for stuff god damn yeah well uh so i think because of that it actually turned me around so when I went in with my dad, because I was able to get the rest of the like 
teenage wiggles. angst and wiggles out of my system, it was able to make me go, wait, I think I maybe I should do ASB or something. That's good. Yeah. I'm so happy your dad was smart. Versus con- constantly tr- just trying to get the wiggles out. And who knows, maybe under my mom, I probably would have been in jail. Because I just would have needed to do crazier and crazier and crazier stuff. Fuck. Because since my dad was giving me allowance, I was like, well, I guess I don't need to sell drugs. You know, maybe, you know, maybe my dad was just way smarter. He was just like, I think my son wants money, which is why he's selling drugs. So he was like, I'll just give him like some a basic allowance. And that way he doesn't, he probably won't feel the need to. And so, yeah. I, so I stopped selling drugs because I was getting allowance. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, man, being a parent's hard, but. We'll get there when we get there. For now, let's fucking just, let's pull all the subwoofers in our garage and just fucking turn it up, baby. Yeah. All right. On that note, thank you so much for sharing all your that, all those uh, fucking funny fails. Is there anything else you want to add? No. Nope. You're trash. What? Every time. <laughs> you're fucking trash. I'm just kidding. All right. But I do want to say thank you to our sponsor, one of my faves, Skillshare. Make sure to explore your creative, uh, you were, Make sure to explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash bill and get a free trial of premium membership. That's Skillshare.com slash bill. And make sure you go to BarbellBrigade.com for all of your fitness needs, whether you need hoodies, tees, and we're going to be dropping our amphibious shorts very soon in the next couple of weeks. The first time we dropped them, completely sold out, and we're coming back with one new color. So we're going to have black, olive, our vapor, and then our deep navy. So make sure you go check that out, barlowbrigade.com. See you guys next time.